us for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Aaron Rappaport, the Gary Jobson Professor in Medical Oncology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Director of the Blood and Marrow Transplant Program at the University of Maryland's Marlene and Stuart Greenbaum Comprehensive Cancer Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Last time we were sitting here, it was with Gary Jobson for a whole program we did on his efforts to raise money for for your work, and one of the things you've been focused on is immunotherapy. In layman's terms, if you can, what, what is that? Well, immunotherapy is, is basically trying to harness the ability of the body's immune system, the defensive cells and, and molecules, the antibodies in the body, to both recognize and fight against their own cancers. Do they, to some degree, so if, if, I, if I get a uh, some sort of uh, routine infection, uh, the, the body goes to work on it. How does it not see the cancer cells as, as being foreign? Well, that's a great question, and, and that's really uh, one of the, um, has been one of the fundamental uh, questions of uh, tumor and cancer biology for many years, and we're really gaining a lot more insight into that. The short answer is basically that in order for the cancer to develop, it has to develop mechanisms to shield itself from the immune system, the body's immune system. Otherwise, it wouldn't develop. The cancer wouldn't have a chance to grow. And there is this concept of immune surveillance, that the body's immune system is, is sort of always on the alert, looking out for early uh, forms of cancer, uh, early stages of cancer, and then going after it and, and preventing the cancer from developing. And presumably what happens is the cancer evolves, uh, develops uh, some ways of, of shielding itself from that immune surveillance, allowing it to grow and to, and to sort of become invisible to the body's uh, normal immune system. So in, in terms of the, the broader toolkit of cancer doctors everywhere, surgery, uh, chemotherapy, radiation, what, what, would, uh, what does happening immunotherapy mean? Well, it, it means many different things. I mean, the, the advantage of, the immune, of immunotherapy is it's very systemic. It can get to anywhere in the body. Surgery, radiation therapy tend to be local therapies. They tend to be uh, effective for uh, cancers that are in, in one or very one place or a very limited part of the body. Chemotherapy uh, and immunotherapy lend themselves to cancers that are much more uh, widespread and uh, and even also to cancers that may be localized but that may be resistant to the more traditional forms of cancer therapy. In your 20 years at the University of Maryland, all sorts of new medications have, have been introduced, including some incredibly powerful uh, drugs in the, in the cancer toolkit. Are, are those newer medicines something different than immunotherapy? Uh, the well, Gleevex the, and stuff like that. Pardon, Gleevex is one, perhaps. Yeah, so Gleevex. So one of the uh, one of the exciting developments in cancer therapy was the uh, air, was the uh, area of targeted therapy. So developing small molecules that would go to cancers and 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 get into cancer cells and target uh, certain uh, pathways that were uniquely uh, activated and driving cancer growth. Uh, immunotherapy works uh, differently. It's working sort of from the outside and, and as, as I say, harnessing the body's uh, defensive cells and, and molecules to recognize and, and go after the cancer cells. And, um, the, you know, the two really exciting uh, developments in this area of immunotherapy have been the, the checkpoint inhibitors and the CAR T-cell therapies, uh, the latter of which uh, just received uh, first FDA approval just very recently for a product that was developed uh, uh, at the University of Pennsylvania and, and in collaboration with Novartis. And uh, these are very different therapies in that the checkpoint inhibitors uh, enable the body's own immune cells that are already in the body that are already often resident and, and actually invading into the cancer cell, into the cancer, to become activated. It's, these, are, these are drugs, antibodies, that actually take the breaks off the immune cells that are already in the body and get them going to fight against the cancer that is there. And um, 
and, and these, this form of therapy is widely applicable. It's applicable to a number of different uh, solid tumors as well as uh, blood cancers like uh, lymphoma, Hodgkin disease, and, and, uh, and, and others. Um, the, uh, the CAR T-cell therapy is a fascinating story in, of, in and of itself, but in, in this case, uh, patients' immune cells are being taken out of the body and then genetically modified or engineered uh, to redirect them to recognize and attack the patient's cancer. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question for the doctor, give us a call. We'll have the number on the screen. You can also tweet your questions at MPT News is the Twitter address. The, the FDA approval that, that just happened on the CAR-T therapy was for pediatric patients, which is unusual. In, in terms of the order in which the FDA normally does things? Uh, yes, uh, I would say so. It, it was specifically for pediatric ALL, or uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is, uh, which is the most common pediatric uh, uh, cancer. And um, this was a result of the work that showed that this uh, form of, of CAR, this CAR T-cell therapy, this engineered T-cell therapy, proved to be most effective against pediatric ALL, uh, pediatric acute leukemia, and was able to cure, uh, induce remissions and cure uh, young people with very, very advanced and otherwise untreatable forms of acute leukemia. What are the, what are the side effects like? Well, the side effects for the CAR therapy uh, is a result of the fact that when these, when these in, genetically modified or engineered T cells go into the body and they recognize, they see the cancer, they react by becoming activated and they proliferate, they expand, and they can expand a, a thousand, uh, even a million fold. And, and that expansion, that rapid expansion results in the release of chemicals, uh, chemical mediators that can cause uh, effects on blood pressure and breathing and, and uh, fever. And, and so the syndrome that is most uh, uh, concerning for these CAR T-cell therapies is something called cytokine release syndrome, which is where these uh, immunologically active and, and uh, chemicals are released by these activated and expanding immune cells that then has uh, other effects on the body. But once that passes, once the patient gets over that, then they, they, they can have an excellent response. Let's take a phone call from uh, Allegheny County. Uh, Leroy on the line, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Uh, yes, um, my, uh, my question was this. I went through radiation treatments, and then they thought, uh, you know, the, uh, the other week there, they thought it was growing more, so they did a PET scan. And now tomorrow I have to go see the oncologist, I guess, for the reading of it. My question is this. Can I take more radiation treatment, or is there an alternative? Uh, Leroy, thank you very much. Obviously, best, best of luck to you. Hard for you to comment without knowing what it is. Uh, yes, but, Leroy. But maybe you could talk a little about how, how the, the new uh, pathways, uh, immunotherapy, fit into the broader toolkit. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I think uh, Leroy's uh, question is very, uh, uh, very appropriate, and, and it does depend uh, very much on the type of cancer and how much radiation has been already delivered. And thankfully, there are some new forms of radiation therapy, including proton therapy that's uh, actually offered at the University of Maryland that, that sometimes can uh, allow patients to get additional uh, radiation therapy because it uh, doesn't affect the neighboring tissues as much, uh, causing uh, side effects. Um, but, uh, but I think the, uh, that's an excellent question, and I think that's somewhat still to be determined. I think the um, uh, right now... Do you now, suspect it's going to be first line? This is what we, you know, we get more experience with it. This is somebody walks in the door and we give them this first, or it's last resort. I think at, at this point these therapies are, are farther down the line because of the toxicities and because of the fact that uh, we have highly effective therapies, uh, chemotherapy and uh, antibody therapy uh, and combinations uh, for an, uh, patients who have initial diagnoses uh, of, of a variety of different cancers, uh, and including uh, childhood uh, acute leukemia and, uh, and uh, lymphoma. Um, 
and adult lymphoma. And these, uh, so these therapies right now are going to be uh, farther down the line. But, uh, but I think as we gain more experience and uh, learn more about them and learn how to uh, uh, both treat and prevent some of the side effects, that they will probably move up. Dr. Rappaport, we, uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.